Hey guys, Ham Solo here. Kilo Zero, Foxtrot, Yankee Romeo. So I finally got back from uh, the Idaho, uh, Montana activations. I was doing some work in Washington State and uh, was at home for maybe, I don't know, day and a half, something like that. And uh, now I'm in Denver. Got to teach some classes over here in uh, Aurora and uh, decided that uh, I wanted to put out a uh, little video on my new HT and so I got an HT that I want to use as my daily carry so I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of a uh, introduction to that radio this is the Alinko DJ dash VX 50 and it is about this size and so this is the Alinko radio and uh, you can see the screen right so right now uh, I have it set up for several of the Colorado repeaters now I am in Denver and so I'm going to have to uh, probably program in some Denver repeaters uh, so I can hit that uh, while I'm talking about it I do have a diamond antenna on it this is the diamond RH 77 CA uh, 2 meter 70 centimeter antenna it is 15 inches long and uh, it is a decent antenna and so uh, wanted to go with the LCD screen so I was able to see that in the daylight and uh, I have it programmed already for about 38 of the local uh, Colorado repeaters uh, where I live uh, one of them I can hit from here it's called the 525 Alpha and that is a Colorado Aries uh, repeater and uh, so I know that I can hit that one from here but I'll try to program in some uh, some local actual ham repeaters and uh, go a little bit over over that as I can um, the one thing I found with this radio is you can program it from the face and it takes a while like any radio does to program from the face um, however if I wanted to do an entire block or import a block of repeaters uh, I had to have the software and so I had purchased the software from Ham Radio Outlet and I got the RT Systems uh, software and I'll uh, show you a, a picture I guess of the box here and uh, until I got that software in it was very difficult in order to uh, program in all the channels that I wanted to uh, I wanted to basically just copy uh, my Baofeng uh, uh, channels that I previously had my with my Baofeng UV 82 HP or whatever and I wanted to just transfer those over uh, but I couldn't do it as a block until I got that software and that software was delayed probably a month and so basically this radio sat there uh, with only one or two channels that I programmed in by hand uh, until I got that software in but so far uh, it's been exceptional as far as an HT. It only has an 1800 hour uh, milliamp battery and uh, I've noticed that it has lasted uh, all day long. Uh, so even with people talking on it, even with me transmitting on it, uh, that 1800 milliamp hour battery has lasted all day long which is very akin to my uh, uh, my Bridgecom uh, DMR radio, the uh, 878 UV2 Plus, even though that's a 32 milliamp amp hour battery, uh, that one, uh, they're both lasting about the same, about 24 hours or so, uh, and I have uh, spare batteries for each. And so, really impressed so far with this Alinko radio, and I uh, hope to show you a little bit more about it as we go along. All right. Uh, so I was able to pick up the programming cable for uh, the Alinko. Uh, now I will give you uh, some words of caution there on the programming cable. I had to wait uh, a couple months, I think it was, for the software from RT Systems. All right. I have other programming cables. I have programming cables that will do... Uh, Wooks and Ocean radios. I have programming cables that will do uh, any tone radios. Uh, I have programming cables that will do Baofengs. Um, they're all pretty much usually the same. There's going to be some type of USB. Usually the uh, one that has the computer chip in it 
and then it ends in a P25 plug, the little plug and the big plug that plug into the side of the radio. Um, what I found with the Alinko is none of those cables will work. Uh, even though it's a P25 plug, even though it looks like the end of the USB that goes in the computer has that FTDI chip or whatever it is, uh, those cables don't work. I've tried and tried and tried. They do not work. And so there is a very special cable that you have to get from RT Systems. And kind of looks like this. Right? And then the other end, even though the radio is a P25 plug, the other end is just the big portion. So there's your P25 connection. There's only one prong, and it goes in the bottom big portion. And when you do that, uh, it'll now connect to the computer, and that's the only way to do it. I've tried all my other plugs. They just don't work. So just a word to the wise. All right, so what I'm going to show you right now is how to uh, add channels in the programming software. So again, the DJ VX50 programmer for the Linko radio had to get that from RT Systems, and I installed it. It's right here. And so when I click on that, it opens up the program, and it looks very reminiscent of uh, almost Chirp software. Uh, I have tried Chirp. That did not work. And again, you have to have the special programming cable anyway. And so I just went ahead and bought the software and the cable at the same time. So I have it plugged into the... Uh, sorry, I have it plugged into the uh, radio. And I'm going to go to the communications port, get data... Be sure the radio is not receiving any signal. Insert the cable. Turn the radio on and so forth. So I hit OK. And it's now reading the data from the radio. And again, I tried this yesterday with the Baofeng cable. It did not work. And so you got to have the proprietary cable uh, from RT Systems, it appears. So now I've downloaded everything that I have in the radio. I've got somewhere in the neighborhood of about 38 channels. And I want to add a couple of the Denver ones because I'm sitting in Denver right now. And so uh, I know one of them for sure. And so I'm going to try to just insert it in the line here. Uh, let me make sure that I have the, the correct uh, frequency. And so I'm going to go to, uh, I'm on my iPad repeater book. All right, Denver Boulder, 145.310. So I was correct about that one. So I'm going to insert a line. And so my 145s are right in here. It looks like it's going to go between line 10 and 11. So I've just highlight that line. I'm going to insert channel 145.10. All right. And when I click over here, it should automatically give me uh, the same frequency. This is going to be offset uh, dropping uh, 600 kilohertz. So I'm going to say the step is 600 kilohertz. It is a minus. So it automatically adjusted some 145310 to 144710 input channel. It is an FM repeater. I'm going to call that Connection Denver, Conden, Tone Squelch. Uh, let's see, what do they use? Set your transmit tone to 88.5. So use the 88.5 transmit tone. Doesn't it say anything about a receive frequency. Where's my other Colcon channels? There's one. They're saying 123 on the yeah, 123 uh, output tone. Let's do 123. Right there. Everything else is just uh, off, high power, and so forth. So I've inserted that channel. I called it Con Denver or Connection Denver. And uh, let's see, do I want to do any other ones around here? No. So I'll go to the Colorado Repeater Association as well. Uh, I'm looking for Squaw Mountain. I think they call it uh, some other mountain right now. I don't. 
I don't actually know what that's called. <clears throat> the 145, 145. So it'll fit right here between 8 and 9. So I'm going to insert channel. 145.145. It is a 600 hertz or kilohertz. It is... Uh, Minus, it looks like. Yep, minus. And so it changed it to 144545. I'm going to call this CRA Denver Crawden Tone Squelch. They do 107.2s for in and out. Yep. And everything else is the same. So programmed in two repeaters. Now I'm going to write that to the radio. I could use the down. I think the down arrow shifts the channel. So I'm going to I'm going to delay that. I'm going to go send data to radio. And it's writing it in. So I just added two channels. I actually put them in sequence by frequency number. Instead of programming from the face and trying to guess where I'm going to stick them in. And so, got them in the uh, in the radio now. I'm going to go ahead and exit this software, and we're going to try out that radio. We'll save. We'll call it Program B 2022. This is 1103, I believe. Save. And then exit. Exit. All right, so let's uh, go to the radio. All right, uh, so I've got the uh, radio program. I got both of them in there. You can see the connection, Colorado Connection Denver. And then on the bottom, you see uh, W0CRA Denver. Uh, one is located on Thornton Mountain, the top one, Colorado Connection Denver, that is 34 miles away. The other one is located on top of. Uh, Squaw Mountain, which has been renamed to Mesta A. Hey, hey. I think it's how you pronounce it. And so uh, that's 37 miles. And so the top one's 34. The bottom one is 37 miles away. Let's see if I can hit those repeaters now that I programmed in the Alinko. So came outside the hotel. I am now uh, on the street. Let's see if I can tilt my camera down. There we go. So I'm on the street uh, in the parking lot of the hotel. Uh, Thornton Mountain and uh, Squaw Mountain are that way, 35 miles, 37 miles. And so I'm going to try again. Uh, Colorado Connection, Denver. Make sure my camera doesn't fall. Uh, I can already hear the, the tone coming off of the repeater. So let me try. This is Kilo Zero Foxtrot Yankee Romeo test. So easily hit the repeater outside. Kilo Zero Foxtrot Yankee Romeo. This is Kilo Charlie Zero Victor Foxtrot Oscar. You're coming through loud and clear. Uh, received. Thank you. 73 K0 FYR. So, uh, once I came outside the building. Zero FYR, you're welcome, sir. This is KC Zero VFO, clear and listening. Yeah, so uh, once I came outside the building, uh, easily hit the repeater, uh, 34 miles away on Thornton. <clears throat> so let me try the one on uh, on Squall. So I'm gonna hit the uh, MS. I think it's MS. Yes, the MS button is gonna change to the top and the lower frequency. And so now I have the W0CRA Denver repeater on Squaw. And uh, let's see if we can hit that 37 miles. This is K0FYR test on the uh, repeater. All right, so I hit it, got the kickback. Whiskey zero, zero, whiskey coming up loud and clear. Uh, received, thank you, 73, K0FYR. So, hit that one, no problem as well. So, 
got them programmed off the uh, off the software. Had to use the uh, cable to do it to put them in the right area. Again, I could have programmed it off the face of the radio, but I wouldn't have probably been able to fit it exactly right where I wanted to in the uh, programming software. And so it's easier just to do it uh, buying the software and the cable. Um, the total for that was maybe between $35 and $50. I don't remember right off the top of my head. Uh, but good radio, good audio. Uh, can easily see it in the daylight. Uh, no problem there. Uh, it's an LCD screen. So you're not having to deal with the colors, kind of like a calculator. And uh, so it's a decent radio. It's now pretty much my, my everyday carry. And again, I got that diamond antenna on it, but it uh, seems to work well even with the stock antenna. This is just a little bit extra distance. And so the Alinko DJ VX50 uh, is recommended by uh, Josh uh, on uh, Ham Radio Crash Course. It's a good radio. So hope you enjoyed that. This is Ham Solo K0FYR73. Mm -hmm.